Okay. Yeah, thank you for sending the material over. That's awesome. So I think the the best thing, like after this call, let's see if we can identify something that I could hit print on and, and see if we could get some sample prints going with your material. So priority would be to see what, you know, what what is the best one out there so far? I haven't actually looked at it. I've been busy doing some other things, like yeah. getting the high temperature printer up and running. So we're doing one that's got a high high temperature heat chamber for 178 C. So now we can print with all, all materials. So oh, awesome. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. Is that like, so everything could, can you even do like granulated, uh, or does it have to be in a, um, filament? Oh, uh, still filament. Okay. For what we have right now, just the same extruders, but then talking about things like, you know, the glide material for bearings, even mm. up to printing with PEI, all the advanced plastics that are high temperature. Oh, cool. I mean, because right now the, the situation is people say you can print a lot of things with the regular printers, but outside of PLA, PET, and pretty much TPU, you cannot print uh, like mm -hmm. even ABS. As soon as you get off the bed and you've got temperature gradients, I mean, the thing just comes apart and delaminates and stuff like that. So right now the state of 3D printing is quite limited without the heated build chamber. So things like polyethylene, polypropylene, which are the most common plastics, you can't print that. You can't get them to stick to the bed nor not delaminate when you're printing. So mm. that's that's the reason for uh, the high temperature. Yeah. That, that, that to me is like the big missing link of 3D printing, like or at least the hobby or kind of like taking that to real distributive economic potential. That's, sure. that's a big one. Mm -hmm. What are you doing for your heated chamber? So it's simply a guard. So first of all, it's going to be an insulated metal structure. So you got insulation yep. between metal walls. But then on the top, you simply have a piece of PEI, just like we use on the bed, that moves. It's attached to the bottom of the carriage. So when it moves, you're basically keeping the top of that chamber closed all the time. So nothing, like none of the mechanical components are exposed. It's just the chamber that you got the high temperature okay, got in. It. And yeah. everything else is outside of it. So okay, yeah, I was thinking you slap a big uh, styrofoam box over the thing and put a put a little heater in there. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. As long as you can keep so basically only the nozzle tip is like yeah. so you've got the surface like the nozzle tip just goes like right through it, and right. then yeah, it's all inside it. that hot chamber. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, tell me what do you do like right now? So you're doing like design work and for for companies stuff like that yeah yeah so i used to work for uh, rolls royce designing jet engines um and then was getting kind of bored with that i did the thermal analysis part um on the turbine and the hot section so everything after they put the gas in they got the burning hot fire mm -hmm. uh, i did the thermal analysis on that uh, from like the turbine blades to the wheel hubs to the casing mm -hmm. um, things like that uh then i went to quest global and uh managed outsourcing for rolls royce going international with that um managed an analysis team there uh, of up to about a dozen people at one point. I uh, built that from basically just myself up, up from there, myself and my boss. Mm -hmm. um, and then, so then that uh, ended because Rolls Royce hit some rough patches. Um, and so then I, now I've gone independent, uh, doing my own stuff, started my own company. Um, and I've been doing that for, what are we, two or three years now. Um, and uh, so I, w I do work for some stuff that's NASA and DARPA related uh, work for a one company and then uh, gardening equipment for another company um, and just about to start up a educational program for um, a trades based organization that is growing very very rapidly and they need to uh, they like to train all their own people directly uh, and so they're looking for training content that is or a way to do training that isn't uh, person centric like it is right now that their main guy teaches everyone how to do everything and he can't do that at the rate that they need to grow uh so then we're going to take that training content and leverage it into um a bunch of things uh from kind of a affiliate or not affiliate but a franchise type education uh for other people doing the similar trade and then probably a tool company as well um long term so yeah, yeah that's, so that's very brief word. summary like with the steam camps that we're doing that's essentially an open source franchise model where we we train people to do them so yeah, is that yeah. Similar or 
I am not super familiar with what you guys are doing. I mean, I've, I pay attention to things here and there, but I don't know the details of uh, exactly how you're doing it. And we wouldn't be interested in the – we're only – it's like the educational portion of – and we're not even anywhere close to figuring out exactly what we're doing on that. That's three or four steps down the, down the way. Uh, we're just about to launch into the first step. But uh, basically, it's more of the educational stuff. So uh, other other people who do a similar trade – uh, this is the key bits of high-end knowledge that we use that makes the business different, um, and we're willing to teach it to you as well, so you can, in your area, um, operate with our improved methods. Yeah, yeah, cool. So yeah, let's talk about, so what have you found out about the masks so far then? Yeah, so looking at the various designs, um, a lot of them, so uh, there's one fellow who did a lot of research on face shapes and such, and they did he did a bunch of modeling of his own face to get a mask that fit very well to his personal face and nose bridge and everything like that. Um, and that seemed to work well. He said it was the most comfortable mask he ever had. and had, I think, don't think it had any compliant layer. It was just plastic right on his face, and it left almost no mark on his face, unlike even like the silicon uh, mask, that like a 3M respirator style. Um, those tend to even leave, especially like right here over the bridge of your nose and on your cheeks tends to push in a lot uh, and, and leave indentations, meaning that there's high pressure locations, which generally means it's uncomfortable. Um, so the straight up plastic ones, when matched perfectly to your profile, uh, seem like a pretty good way to go. But that, of course, is not good for mass production <laughs> uh, unless you can mass scan people's faces and then make people personal masks. Mm -hmm. um, so I still think going the direction of making a um, molded, uh, some uh, a 3D printed mold, uh, that then you pour in either a soft plastic. Um, there's one video that uh, I came across of a guy doing that with fishing lures, and it worked really well. Um, as just sort of an example, lure. fishing lure. So like the wiggly baits, um, the plastic wiggly baits that um, people make. Uh, someone made a 3D printed mold. And then poured that soft plastic into that into that plastic mold, uh, and it came out great uh, with very little parting lines or anything like that. I have no idea what skin contact that soft plastic bait material. If that's any good for skin contact, probably that's not. That's plastic, that fishing lure stuff. Uh, yes, yeah, yeah. He warmed it up in the microwave, I think, in like a little Pyrex jug, and then has a syringe, sucked it out, and just squirted it in there. I mean, it's very very compliant material. Um, if you've ever Do you used. Have a can you share any or, links? Did you record this anywhere, or you want to? Uh, no, I didn't. I mean, it's in my YouTube's history, so yeah, I can I can bring those up. Uh, give me a second here. Uh, the other thing would be to use a silicon based material, uh, in which mm -hmm. case you'd be looking at a platinum um, cured silicon for a skin contact a skin skin contact material. Uh, history here. Hmm. Getting there, maybe. <laughs> maybe it was my other account that I might have been looking at under my work account. I hate it when I do that. I have too many, too many accounts in too many places to find things. Let's try it here. Yeah, here we go. This is right. Um, can I screen share on here? Yeah. Screen share. Can you uh, actually, yeah, screen share, but can you paste the link in of what you've got there? So I yeah. can also look at it later. Um, so this is the, here we go. This is the guy that did the plastic baits. Uh, he goes on to how he made the mold. Um, Do we know what that plas the plastic bait material is? Uh, it's dead on plastic uh, swim bait jerk something or another. It's, it's for making these uh, plastic fishing lures. And I think it's probably too soft for what we want to do. You can see it's very compliant. Mm-hmm. 
And then he also made a uh, a quad based one. So here you can see he's just warmed up that plastic in a little Pyrex. Uh, it has a little custom metal plunger gun. Huh. Um, is that like a rubber like material? Is that a rubber? Or what? Do you know the chemical makeup of that? I don't know. It's. I mean, it's specifically for making these crankbaits. Hmm. Um, so this was a quad tail with four different pieces oh, to wow. it, which is what he was surprised about. Those um, things, before. the mold there, is that 3D printed or is that something you buy? Yes. Yeah, he 3D printed that. Um, at the end here... Oh, oh, maybe it's in the middle here. He talks about... Yeah, yeah. so here... his. He has the wall thickness too thin. Um, yeah, interesting. Huh. So basically, it goes into where he says the he needs to he had like ten layers, and he went to fifteen layers, and then that fixed it because there was a spot at the bottom here that uh, got too thin with three mm D -hmm. printing. He's got a twenty five percent infill, I think, on the rest of it. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Find my email. Uh, can you paste, you see the chat box, can you paste the link to that video in there? Yeah. Maybe, chat box, chat box. Oh, there we go. I you open it up. Got it. So there's that one, and there's... Uh, hey, this here. is silicon casting in silicone. And it's a gel 10. So you can see they're pulling an ear, which is super mm -hmm. complex. Yeah. Uh, so you silicon out of your silicone. Um, so silicone material? That yeah, is so both, it's a silicon mold. It's actually the same material. The silicon mold and a silicon casting out of the silicon mold. Um, mm -hmm. And they're both gel 10, which are apparently very, very, very sticky. Uh, and so they talk about using a, a liquid-based release on that. Mm-hmm. Um, let's see. Can you uh, paste in a link to that? Yeah, you did. Okay. Yeah, I did. You, that there should you be the next link down. Casting uh, gel tin into a. You do want to be still more careful about um, the type of silicon that you use. Mm -hmm. uh, I think this is all other stuff. Do you have a 3D printer? Do you do any prototyping yourself? or? Not yet, but I'm, I've been getting the itch. <laughs> yeah. Because <laughs> um, it would, yeah, the more, and right now I'm doing something that's, so far a lot of what I've done is either um, lab bench designs uh, for the uh, group that does the NASA DARPA work. Uh, they need a lot of vacuum chamber based lab workbenches and so they tend to push that off to me because it's not because they, they try to keep their high-end technology inside mm -hmm. um, and not you know, have me do some of the extraneous stuff uh, that the rest of the guys are too busy to work with mm -hmm. uh, so I do a lot of lab benches for them uh, and then for the other for the gardening company we're getting into custom uh, plastic molding now uh, up to now it's been a lot of laser cutting uh, of acrylic sheet and uh, re reworking other plastic parts for injection molding, mm -hmm. uh, but where the not, like ninety five percent of the designs already figured out, we're just optimizing it a bit. So there's not a lot of size. And then you outsource feeling. it for prototyping. Uh, most of the time, it it goes a little fast. I think in to almost direct directly into full production. Uh, a lot of these sheets are they're twelve by twenty four size, and so three D printing those aren't isn't particularly possible at this point. 12 so, by 24 should, inch? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's like a full gardening tray. Mm -hmm. um, so this guy actually, this is another guy who made a 3D printed mold for his uh, silicon parts. Mm -hmm. uh, they're dampening parts for his motor Hi, thing. this video. Uh, so this was uh, one cool thing that he did here is he used uh, clamping bars with uh, bolts. 
uh, between each other and then put pipes to connect multiple molds because he's trying to do a, a whole batch instead mm. of just doing one mold at a time. Um, and he, this he figured this was the easiest thing to do rather than trying to make a massive 3D print um, with a bunch of separate pieces. Um, and he has this sur- giant caulking syringe. Okay. Or is it? I don't know where it is or what's in it or where he got it from, but it looks like a product that's designed to go in a caulk gun. And he squeezes this uh, low viscosity silicon material. Um, I guess it may be pre-mixed. I'm not sure exactly what, what it is. Um, and then the tube's all sacrificial because uh, the, the silicon sets up in them and then it's solid. Um, this is some complex undercut mold that he had to fill vertically to get all the air bubbles out. Mm-hmm. Um, so then disassembling, basically you end up with a bunch of little clamshells. Uh, he says like oyster shucking. Uh, so there you can see he's got the uh, silicon part that he's pulling out of the uh, 3D printed part, 3D printed mold there. Yeah. So, so in terms, terms of, of uh, mass production, um, I think something that would be smart. I, the other thing that keeps coming up is, like, uh, I think the emergency need for masks in the U.S. is kind of ebbing somewhat. But having a design out there that can be used for other countries uh, and, ex- and or printing when needed. And I think even more interesting is from a uh, the, the larger scope of your, your project of making... Uh, the a whole industry, a whole from scratch. You know, PPE is something that's pretty critical, and having something that you can have a cartridge that you put on that has um, chemical uh, vapor resistance in a charcoal filter or a bottle of charcoal that you can basically make yourself at home mm-hmm. uh, and just plug into the system. I think that would be really cool because those uh, filters, those carbon filters that go on like a 3M mask, they're really expensive uh, for. If you're going through them significantly with welding or something else. What was your comment about the U.S.? D- did you say that you think that the U.S. situation is getting more stable or, or not yet? Yeah, I think so. Uh, in terms of just direct filtering PPE masks. Um, PB? P- PPE. PPE. Just, just, PPE, just yeah. standard medical like N95 style masks. Mm-hmm. I think that's... I've heard a lot less panic. Mm-hmm. Um what am I typing in here? Uh, I've heard a lot, a lot less panic and um, and a lot more. It seems like the reports that come from uh, President Trump every uh, day or so. Uh, there, so if you look at the logarithmic graph of a lot of places, including New York yep. uh, and my state, everything is is turning right now, uh, and fl- logarithmically is almost gone flatlined. Mm-hmm. Uh, and in terms of the uh, additional hospitalizations and such, a lot of those additional cases per day mm-hmm. are now flatline and remaining constant. Um, so I think there's a lot of good, or sufficient mass production out there for U.S. need um, at current level. I still think this is a very, and I think to make this project even more worthwhile, doing something that works for that and works for future projects or future use uh, in inside your personal stuff um, or OEC's personal stuff and or other third world countries which need access to, uh, ready access to uh, PPE that you can't uh, buy a box of. Um, I think that's that'd be really yeah. smart. Are you thinking about a, respirator mm-hmm. style where you have the two two holes on the sides and you have the two cartridges? Like the, I mean, just showing? it seems to be, yeah. that seems to be pretty yeah. consistently the the recommended way to go um i don't know why there's always two honestly i don't well, know if there's more, a... i'd say more more area so it's easier to breathe now yeah yeah why are like for the n95 masks for actual microbe the the virus safety why are they not using these style respirators more is it because I, these are too expensive or too... i think cuz they're they didn't think about it Honestly, I think it's I mean, a this... purchase, a price of purchase. So if you look at the, they use those little flat um, sheet mask, the medical masks that aren't even N95, just a flat yeah. 
little uh, medical mask that was a pleated thing that sits in front of your face. Uh, I mean, that's what they that's what they've always used for everything in terms of stopping your germs leaving out. Now, I guess one big thing is these masks. They all have um, they don't have a filtered outlet on them. They've all just got a valve that just lets everything come right out. Um, yeah. In the front, there's so, a, basically a check valve in the front. Right, right. So versus something like this, where everything in or out goes through the filter. Um, mm -hmm. And so just the gas is going in and out. Um, whereas with all these, they've all got the check valves on them. So maybe that's it, that they they're don't want, or they want it more filtered. Because in, so for if you look at in a uh, operation environment, um, mm -hmm. they're using those pleated uh, flat masks um, to prevent the doctors putting their uh, infectious particles into the operating person. In, yeah. into the board, I guess. Um, and that seems to be their main concern. Uh, then when it comes to infectious diseases, they always go to those uh, the blue N95s, uh, for, as what I've seen, or green. And um, they do two. Like, uh, one is the surgical mask on top of the N N95, right? I've seen that. I've, no, I've not. Um, maybe this guy's got it, though. So, I mean, this is what I've seen is just uh, all the medical people wearing these these blue ones. I don't know why they're blue. Um, but, I mean, yeah, if you consider something like this, it's sort of like, I don't know, to me as an engineer, that's like, yeah, okay, you're, you're pretending to throw a bone at it. <laughs> yeah, this is, well, that, that part is just for spitting on your patient, like droplets on a patient, I think, right? Yeah, it's but it's just like, I mean, maybe they are really just that cheap, but... I, I don't understand why that that is sort of the accepted norm. Like, why wouldn't you at least in good times use an actual mask um, that oh. stops any side flow as well? Right, uh, but that's. I think that is the standard, the industry standard, when you're working with infectious disease. Like, they don't don't just do that. They put the N95 underneath that still, if mm -hmm. they're working on a patient that's got the virus. This is mm. this is just for operating, as far yeah. as I understand. And then you have the the two mask. When you when there's virus, infection risk. So, um, I mean, the other thing would be some of the neoprene masks could be something that would could be worth considering um then there's also the or is it the face mask style masks um so i did some construction work for a while mm -hmm. and the smart guys that were doing even things like drywall that's yep. just dusty yep. they would wear a mask like this uh because then you're not or if you're spraying paint or yeah. anything like that it's just, mm. it's it's not an issue anymore you can just go in there do your thing uh, this plus a Tyvek suit, and you're pretty impervious to most things <laughs> um, in in a semi hazardous environment, as um, opposed to a separate separate eyewear which can get paint underneath it, like from the sides. Yeah, and so these are designed to flow the air. Um, so your breathing air comes into the port. Let's see if we can get this bigger. Breathing air comes into this port uh, and clears out the. Um, the mask area and then flows into your breathing area you see there it's got a double valve so the red one is where the fresh air comes in mm -hmm. and when your actual breathing goes into that hole just above it and then it is expelled out of here so you're constantly refreshing the air inside your eye area which i think helps a lot with keeping it defogged mm -hmm. uh where if you're wearing Saying, any kind of goggles they tend sorry, to fog. you said the red one is where the air comes in and the one above that is what so yeah your filtered air comes in Filtered air comes in here, out of your filter, and then the air inside your mask in your eye area goes into here. To breathe it, your your nose area is separate from your eye area. Ah, uh, okay. Uh, and so this it keeps the moisture controlled because the fresh dry air comes in. Uh, and obviously, it mixes with whatever moist okay. eye air. You mm -hmm. breathe that in, then you breathe it out. So you're kind of pumping your eye. You're pumping the moisture out of your eye. Eye container. <laughs> Um, so, so the other thought just to repeat be, there, so the the nose piece 
is separate from the eyepiece, right? Yes, in terms of cavities, yeah. Yeah, there's two cavities. Each one gets air inlet, and the outlet is common. Yes. So, well, your air, no, it flows in the red, through there, and then out here. Let's see if they've got a. I'm not getting it. So, so okay. So you got the inlet through the filter elements through the red. And uh, so the the ones by the nose piece, the holes by the nose piece. What's their function? Yeah, just a second here. Draw a picture. But yeah, like like what you're just showing right now, the full face one. That's that's a good product to have around. Both. Yeah, so if both the respirator we design this type, if if you guys design the respirating part of it uh, mm -hmm. that fits the filter, the nose piece mm -hmm. to hook into a face screen as well, mm -hmm. uh, and it's the same thing, and you just need to add a face screen to it. Mm -hmm. It simplifies things a lot. I, it maybe well, it simplifies what you need on hand a lot. It may not simplify the design a lot. Right. So, uh, where's the color? Anyway, so, okay, so you got your stinky air out here. That goes through here, uh, which mixes with your the air in your eye cavity here. Mm -hmm. You breathe that in here, and then that all flows out here. Uh, when you said breathe that in, okay, explain that. So what you're breathing, when you breathe in, the, the obviously you're breathing, the, the, in, this is your nose cavity here. Mm -hmm. You're breathing the air in that cavity. This has got a valve on it right here. Okay. On that port and that port are valves. Um, and so the air that as you breathe in, it's going to pull fresh air from your air from your eye cavity into there. Oh, that's and, inside. Yes, and then this okay. is going to bring fresh air through the filter into your eye cavity. Oh, I didn't see that was inside. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, so it's yeah. filtering the air coming into your eyes and then that's going through your nose cavity and out mm -hmm. yeah uh, and so it's it's way like i've tried to use goggles with like a the regular kind of respirator yeah um, and it, it even glasses it's hard to get it to sit right uh they're always pushing off uh oh, yeah they the, just don't the fogging up well. is the issue yeah yeah if you try to do a separate uh mask plus eyewear yeah that just doesn't work you fog up pretty quickly yeah, yeah. So I mean, I've got something. Uh, one of these, I forgot which one. Um, but uh, actually, while I've got these up, that brings up one of the other subjects: is instead of using um, a rubberized um, elastic, uh, using a just a um, poly or threaded strapping, and then with a simple three D printed um, threaded strapping. Point, yeah, so instead of using rubber bands, because rubber bands, so for example, I think it might have been New York City had something like 10 million masks in the warehouse, um, but they were all expired mm -hmm. by like five years or something. And the, everyone's like, what what is expired on them? Why can't, you know, it's just a piece of plastic. Why can't it last for 30 years or something? But the problem is all the rubber bands that hold the masks onto your head, those that's the part that rots out and, mm -hmm. and, and dies. Uh and so that seems like a unfortunate failure point, <laughs> mm -hmm. you know, in terms of the, the life, the, the length of life of your mask. And so instead going to a, um, a headgear, this, um, where it's just a regular kind of poly strapping, mm -hmm. uh, these all have some elastic in them, but the one I have is just, it's just a straight, um, it, it has no stretchiness to it at all. Uh, then there's some smart designs. A lot of them include a. I'm trying to see if there's one that I have here. It's got a lever lock on the front that um, loosens up the whole thing and lets it hang around your neck. Uh, so you buckle it around your neck, and then you have a lever that you push down the front. Let me go fetch it actually, and then I can just show you how it works. Mm -hmm.
All right. So I think you can... Camera should be back on. So um, you can see there that this is just uh, like a webbing, mm -hmm. almost just a narrow webbing, but a half inch uh, wide webbing. There's no stretch to it all. Uh, it's just a solid mm -hmm. webbing. Um, and those, it just goes through a simple, um, it's not even ratcheting. It's just sort of a gripping tab mm -hmm. uh, of plastic there. Uh, and so, then on the back, I, are these these are faintly stretchy, but it wouldn't need to be. Um, and then it's, it's got a, a snap clip like that. So this part goes around your neck. Um, and then it's got this uh, piece that connects to the back of your it goes on the back of your head. And my favorite part about this mask compared to a lot of others is it's got this uh, levering system here. So you can see oh, the lever yeah. locks. And then if you so if you need like, well, in this case, scratching your nose is not a good idea. But if you need some fresh air, you can pop it off like that. Everything stays oh, yeah. in place. You don't have to fiddle with it. And then you just yeah. Oh, that's convenient. Yeah. Yeah. And so then it's it hangs from your head. It stays in place. You can take a drink. You can go do something for a minute. I mean, not great great in a pandemic situation to be right, <laughs> taking your stuff on and off. But just in terms of a general design, mm. uh, it's. A lot more comfortable. Um, this is a AOS safety, um, which I can never find cartridges for. It drives me nuts. <laughs> yeah. Three um, M. Is it or? Not sure. I thought AOS fine. safety was a separate. Oh, it is. AOS safety is, says 3M PPE. I don't know why. Uh, is... There's AO and AOS safety. This is A O oh, A O safety. Okay. Oh, this is selling 3M stuff with it. Safety. What's the difference between, like, for example, the paint? So this one. See the chat. Say this one, 3M disposable and 95 particulate with the little valve in the middle, as opposed to just the filter material throughout. That's a check valve to for letting air out for easier breathing. Uh, here, you gotta turn your voice on. I I can't hear you now. I clicked on the link and it went to. Uh, yeah, it yeah. opened in the That's same right. window. You gotta always click out. Yeah, middle um, click it. All right. So what about on there? Yes, if you wanna look at my screen. So the the part in the middle that's the check valve to to make breathe breathing easier, right? Out. Yeah. Yeah. Breathing out. Theoretically, I have some of those. I don't feel like it makes any difference, mm -hmm. but. And you mentioned uh, about condensation. Uh, your point about that is. Yeah. yeah so, so in a uh, in a three D printed mask, um, actually even in, so, for example, in this, you can see it's got um, an inset. Sorry, Sorry, repeat that. Go ahead. Yeah, so say it again. Yeah. Um, so um, you, this mask and all the all these with the kind of the rubber yep. or silicone um, facing, they've got the inset portion here. And when you're breathing through this for for a couple hours, um, the inside of this fills up with water. And having this piece here stops that from dripping out and getting your face all. I mean, it's all, they're already kind of gross, mm -hmm. <laughs> but uh, having this here um, keeps it has a pool, a place for that to collect. Yeah. Um, so one of the designs, one of the links that you sent me, um, they had the breathing filter on the bottom, mm. directly on the bottom. Uh, and so that's going to collect all that moisture and the filter is either going to, it's going to get affected. Either it's going to get clogged by water, you know, like trying to breathe through a wet towel doesn't work. Um, or it's going to, 
uh, collect moisture, and then things going to be my, be able to migrate through the moisture through the water um, and get to the inside of that filter because mm-hmm. um, that's just not it's not the same filter media. It doesn't work the same in air as it does in water. Yeah. Um, so yeah, just be mindful. It needs to be mindful of that. Even in all the other three D printed designs that are just a plastic cup that fits on your face, that's gonna get it's gonna get roll grody and like you're gonna have like gross sweat and face breath moisture like dripping down your chin all the time. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's just gonna be pretty gross. Uh, so adding a lip, a little reservoir area inside of there to retain that moisture um, would be a smart idea. Um, so, and I think, so the biggest thing that I saw is a lot of people are going to a square cut filter media, um, mm-hmm. that does optimize the usage of the material. Mm-hmm. Uh, but whenever you try and get a square piece to fit over another square piece, you tend to get weird folds in the corner wrinkles and, and wrinkles and folds don't, um, necessitate tight sealing. Um, the other thing with a, using a square, um, is just, you, you don't have hot, um, uh, heterogeneous forces on everything or homogeneous forces on everything uh, and it lets more stuff through and it's real easy to take like a piece of tape or a piece of string pretty much anything going around a circle you can get a really good tight seal around the whole circle um, not so with a square um, you'll get good if you took a string or tape or I mean tape's a little different because you got the adhesive force there but if you took string uh, around a square you're going to get good um compression on the corners but on the flats it's just going to be whatever it is mm-hmm. um, so the other thing um, to consider is if you go to a round uh, inlet uh, then that can be connected to uh, and you make it the same size as like PVC fittings uh, or uh, go with like a water pipe uh, sizing or something like a, a PEX pipe um, that can be connected to either a, a, a powered system uh, as an upgrade um, or to a more complex filtration system um, so, for example, if you were to consider a PVC fitting uh, and instead of having uh, these cartridges on the side here, let's say you had a single port on the front uh, and then you get like an inch and a half PVC pipe uh, that can be packed with whatever media you want in a T style and then just end caps on there. Uh, then you can pack that with, if you wanted to do a carbon filter um, mechanism, you could pack that with uh, activated carbon Part particulate uh, within some within some filter uh, fabric to, to keep the carbon where it needs to be, uh, and then you can just unscrew caps on that and exchange, change that out. Um, basically, having off the shelf uh, plastic fittings interface with that. Um, so you know, essentially, you're turning your your face orifices into something. You, this is your face orifice adapter <laughs> that adapts yeah. it to any hardware that you want to adapt it to. Mm-hmm. Um, so, for, I think that that for activated carbon, what particle size do you know? I don't. Um, yeah. Um, Have I mean, you most seen... of these masks. It. All, I mean, it all depends on, and I don't know if there's a standard for that or if they just test it. Um, so I do. A long time ago, I did some research on like uh, making your own um, chemical safety. Uh, filtration system, mm-hmm. or you know, this is more in lines of like a chemical warfare kind mm-hmm. of safety cartridge. Um, and basically, if you so you need a, ideally you have a a basic material, uh, and then you have a acidic material in in layers, and then you have your carbon material, and then you have that all sandwiched in a filter fabric on either ends of it. Uh, and so then, if whatever the air is coming in, if it's basic or acidic, it gets neutralized. Any other chemical content gets picked up by uh, your your carbon, um, and then obviously your filter fabric is there to keep the those particulates in place, um, and uh, to filter out any particulate material coming in. What's what was the basic or acidic material you were looking at? Uh, I think the basic material is just like baking soda. Uh, I've forgotten what the acidic rec- uh, recommended material was. It might have been something like citric acid. Um, you d- generally, you want to go with something that is not harmful if you get if you breathe some in or eat some. Um, mm-hmm. In both those cases, in small quantities, neither of those is a major Citric issue. Acid as powder, or or how? Yeah, yeah. Because um, you want and you want this all to be in a particulate format so that it can uh, be packed in, but you can breathe through it. Yeah. Hmm. So I think whatever 
uh, particulate size. Obviously, the bigger particles um, aren't going to, it's not going to filter as well, but you can breathe more easily. Yeah. And so it's all, you know, one of those engineering optimization things of how much is actually getting through and how much is actually getting filtered out. Mm -hmm. uh, like these cartridges here, these are, these are really old, but they used to be <laughs> a carbon filter, I think. Where's the rating on it? Yeah, these are P100s. Um, so therefore, chlorine, uh, chlorine dioxide, hydrogen chloride, hydrogen f uh, fluoride, organic vapors, sulfur dioxide with a P100 particulate filter, which is a 99.97 efficiency. Um, and I've been using these for a, a long time, so I wouldn't consider them good for most chemicals. But um, you know, it's not a very big, not a very big package mm -hmm. um, to be able to That's filter. Is the P100 that, is that carbon? Uh, I don't know actually what's all in here. I've never opened one. Um, mm -hmm. You've got the you got a, pl a pleated filter yep. um, inside the front here. On the back here, you've got some sort of uh, uh, fuzzy kind of felted material, mm -hmm. uh, and then I'm not sure what's in between the between the, and the rest. Pleats are are that's just to increase surface area significantly. Yeah, yeah, because that's yeah. I mean it's a P100, so that's some probably beyond HEPA. Um, filtration material that's very fine. So, yeah. Then I've in the past I've stuck like a piece of microfiber towel over this with a little wire retainer as a pre-filter to try and keep some of the, the junk out of here because these are <laughs> I need to get new ones. They're they're getting a little tight. So P100. I mean that's way better than the N95 stuff, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I think mm -hmm. a lot of it. So you, well, you've got both the filter rating, and then you also got what's going around the outside, you know, between the edges of the mask. Um, yeah, you, know, you can have a really great filter, yeah. uh, but actually, if you, if you get too good of a filter material, and then you still have gaps, the good filter material is not going to flow as easily, and then you're going to have a whole bunch of leakage on the outside. Uh, and so, getting a good fit um, on the, an average face is probably the, the first critical step. Yeah, um, yeah. On the P100s, that's that's like also good for virus, right? Well, it's it's yeah, it's a lot better than a, a lot better than 95. A, yeah. Um, you know, multiple times, you know. Yeah, I, yeah it's, it's like a ton a better times or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, 5% versus like 0 0.05%. Yeah. Um, yeah. The material that you got from the the filter company, so what company is that? That's that's discount filters in Greenwood, um, Indiana. Mm -hmm. So um, that's so that's they, a client of yours. Yeah, yeah, I did some some work there with their manufacturing equipment. Uh, so, for example, they their company they have this kind of scrap all the time, or yes, yeah, they so in their pleating machine, so they pleat a bunch of material, mm -hmm. um, and uh, let me go to this. In their plating machines, at the start and end of each run, there's a uh, significant amount of wastage material that mm -hmm. just it's on the roll still, or it's off the roll, or it's, just, it's cut and it's not convenient to use. Uh, and it's it's cheap enough that it's not worth them trying to do something with it. And it's too small, and it's just you know it's fiddly bits. Mm -hmm. They're producing thousands of large filters a day, um, and so, so yeah, yeah, they probably I would guess they probably have a pallet or two. Uh, like a pallet size box, like a 48 by 48 by 48 box of loosely packed material uh, every day mm. um, or, or potentially more. Um, mostly in the uh, MERV 13 material. So oh, this, their, yeah. their MERV 11, I believe, and I don't know if it's all this way, but their MERV 11 and MERV 13 material is actually the same material. Um, it's just rated different based on the airflow rate. Um, By, based on airflow, okay. And it's, so it's depending on what your flow rate is, um, it's either a MERV 11 or it performs, it flows like a MERV 11, but removes particles like a MERV 13. Uh, so it's a bit of a fancier material, but they get, uh, it costs more, but they get better utilization out of it by having one less skew of material, something Where, like that. What is the actual source? Is that melt-blown plastic? Uh, I th based on the emails that I think I copied you on, um, I think it is.
do they get that from China or is that US made? Um, I don't, well, it's a US company that they're dealing with. I don't know where that company gets their material from. I'm just looking through the emails here. Gotta find the, uh, I think it's Kimberly Clark Professional Division. Is there a shortage so, of the actual material or just of the masks? I mean, so, ba based on the emails that are from them, um, Kimberly Clark's material that is actually used for making masks that is all that is all spoken for, and it's all. Uh, directed to, to mask makers um, but so there are these other materials but they've never for air filters but they've never been tested for mask production so yes there's a shortage of uh, mask making material or at least it's all been purchased or assigned to people um, as of a couple weeks ago because I looked uh, at Alibaba and it's like there's seems to be tons of suppliers of N95 mask material is that so Do, are you familiar with that any or I've not looked at that at all. Uh, there's also, so I mean, Alibaba is also a mix of resellers and factories. Um, and so you never really know if you're dealing with someone who's just buying it from their brother-in-law who runs the factory, mm -hmm. <laughs> or if you're buying it actually from the guy who runs the factory, because they, they always say that they, they run the factory, but half the time they don't. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of times it's a few steps in there. Um, I know up until recently, there was also a big difference between things that were graded for industrial and graded for uh, medical usage. Um, and because the medical use masks have to go through a separate FDA based um, verification process, which I think is also why they're, they're green. Um, and then recently, uh, as of a few weeks ago, they started accepting industrial quality masks, mm -hmm. um, which I think has made a big difference in the availability of masks. Uh, is the industrial ones are, I think they're produced to the same standards, but they're not tested. Um, and there's a, there's a little bit more, I think, variability there um, in that. You know, I'm not actually sure why, because in many ways, I feel like the industrial applications are actually more stringent. You're breathing, you're breathing particulates. It's kind of a bigger deal. You're going to die faster than if you, you know, if you breathe virus. Okay, you're gonna get sick, but you can probably get better from it. It's not like a necessarily a permanent issue. Uh, whereas breathing like asbestos particles, it's like, yeah, you're gonna die. <laughs> uh, sounds you're, like you're, you're, industrial you're particles masking. may typically be smaller than viruses, right? Could be, yeah. Um, I mean, N95s, the virus is like 0.3 microns. It all depends on what you're dealing with, uh, right? Because it's like, say you got some chemical like whatever benzene or whatever when you talk about a virus that's like kill adultons like hundred thousand uh atoms here yeah like for other molecules it's like you know ten hundred whatever so it seems like the virus is bigger um, but yeah yeah so is, did you run across any masks that are like that got a good see like what what you end up in terms of any actual files that we can say okay this is actually a good one to print right now what i was thinking is um, a good strategy for the the seal is you have a some kind of a gasket which a tubular uh rubber printed mm -hmm. gasket kind of like on a on a masks which have the retaining uh, with the retaining flexible structure something that's easy to print would be a circular tube that's that's one piece and then it has something where you would just kind of like insert it it might have like a rib on it that you just yeah. insert it into the mask or something like that that sounded like uh something i would want to do um do you run any, into anything like that because that will also have like if it if you cl close down on it it would be have some air in there so it should actually be like sure. a bubble yeah um i so what i came across was either people are making custom shapes for faces um or compliant materials mm -hmm. um, I don't think there's an easy way to do a mostly rigid material that isn't fit to faces um, there are a couple that use a thermo fitting process so they either print it flat yeah. uh, and then that you heat it up and you press it onto your face to custom fit it um, but if there's not if you're using a hard material there has to be some level of customization to your face because nose bridges and sizes and widths and all that stuff just vary so much that um, you know, it's always right. Right here is always the the biggest leak points right next to your nose, mm -hmm. up to your eyes. That's where all the air comes out of every mask. I mean, 
even even in the paper masks or uh, the N95 style, they got the metal clip to try and push push down on that and minimize it. Because that's like uh, where we have like less least like soft tissue, pretty much. Well, it's also like you're going else. you're going from you know convex, then you're going concave, yeah. then you're going convex, and it's just you know every all the mask material wants to just go flat yeah. from convex to convex and miss the concave portion. Yeah. <laughs> Um, so you got to have something that forces it in there. But then, of course, you got you have people that have high noses that stick out a lot, and you got you got broad, broad, broad flat noses, all kinds of things that um, either you need to customize your file or you need to have some post production system that customizes that. Mm -hmm. uh, which is why going to you know like th this style where the whole thing is just it's all rubbery that can just get smashed onto someone's face and it works. Did you run into any actual files for, say, like molds like that, or anything that you can recommend to print? Actually, uh, I didn't. I didn't look for those. No. Okay, so that, I guess that would be the next step, or or just try to do like take take an existing mask that's out there already, and then yeah, just try to do that gasket part. Um, as far as um, the idea of the screw-on filter, like, did you see good masks? Featuring those are good designs for those screw-on filters, or yeah, it's all in my head, <laughs> unfortunately. If you run into yeah. any useful, keep yeah, just uh, keep sending stuff over, or, like post it on the workshop yeah, page. But yeah, sure. just send me stuff over if you see any like good candidates. Cause it looks like still like there's a gap there. Like there's been a lot of work done, but I think there's a yeah, like the quality of it is. I don't think it's there yet. I think it's yeah. getting there. There's also the mindset of is this a a long-term project or this is an immediate like just try and get something put long out term. there no long term this is um, like open source what you said before oh yeah. see we, we have the workshop we should be using masks whenever there's dust around like and also yeah. for like like right now say the third world that doesn't have it at all and right but i mean once again a real commercial viable product that's that would be the goal so it's a long term it would be a long term thing but let's yeah. get this thing so it's it's like if something like this happens, say we've got our thousand branches of OSE worldwide, we can just say, okay, hey guys, thousand masks yeah. a day times a thousand chapters, a million, you know, million masks a day, kind right. of deal. That'd be cool. Yeah. 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 So I think I think that's pretty good. Uh, learned a few good things here. But yeah, like if you see any any files, like there's there's some reviews like on the N95 page we have we have a page on it. Let me show you what we've got there. There's a big list of masks, but I mean none of them are like really all there. So I looked through the yeah, the five or so links that you sent me. I think to masks, um, mask options, and things that other people had done. Yeah, they looked largely like sticking a plastic cup on your face. Um, like where it's it, okay, it works great for the person who made it, but it's not going to be custom designed to a individual's face. Um, and then if you look at the uh, all the higher end masks, like we were looking at earlier with the plastic shields in there as well, um, they all use the the rubber nose portion um, on any on any of the higher end masks. It's all got the the cartridges are separate. The rubber nose portion is um, because that's what actually seals well. Um, and you do industri in industry, you have to do leak tests using uh, banana essential oil because that's like the strongest smelling essential oil there is. Oh, yeah. Uh, and so you got to do leak tests on this part um, and make sure that you can't smell anything because if you can, then it's leaking around the filters. You, you can you clog up the filters like that and you can do a blow and suck test as a simple method. Uh, but then also with the organic filter cartridges, yeah, you're supposed to do a banana essential oil smell test. Um, like weekly. The or test is or like if without the filters. What do you do? You s you see if the what's the test without the filter? Yeah, yeah. So I mean, even with the filters on, you can put your hands over mm -hmm. there. But uh, the basic idea is you uh, uh, either you suck or you blow. So for the inlet, you you do this. All right. So when I put my hands on there and suck in, and I can't breathe, no, there's no air coming in. Mm -hmm. Then I know that it's stuck around my face really tight. Um, so. And you and shouldn't for, be able yeah. to breathe at all, right? Right. There should be nothing coming in. And then for the outlet, you can put your hand on here and then you pressurize it. And you should, I mean, when it's a fully pressurized, it's going to leak out around the sides. But um, well, How'd you do that right now? I mean, you don't have the filter cartridges there. You can't do that right now, right? Or 
Well, yeah, oh, wait, you they, can. They have, a, they have a check valve the other way, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay, there's yeah. A, right. just a little simple okay. rubber flap in there. Yep. Um, yeah. Yeah. I look at it more like for our goals. I want to see like, okay, here's the, the nose piece element, the filter cartridge. So highly modular. You have the yeah. full helmet, you've got the face shield, and you can mix and match them. And then you have the respirator. You can take get rid of that and put it into a powered air purifying air purifier. Yeah. Things yeah. like that. So keep it completely modular. Filter elements of different sizes, like small ones for the face, larger ones for the papper. And then larger scale, like a household air purifier. You know? So so make all those things as modules that you can then do the normal yeah. construction set approach like we do. Yeah. I think one of the coolest things to do would be so for those large masks with the screen with the, um the plastic view viewing area on them mm. uh, or plastic portion. Um, for example, if you're painting or doing any kind of industrial kind of stuff, it's real easy to get some material on there that ruins it mm. uh, and having that easily replaceable yeah. with something that you can cut with hand tools to cut it, you know, make rectangle. <laughs> yeah. It's going to look kind of dorky, a little steampunky maybe. Or mm -hmm. You just got like a windscreen sitting in there, not all nice and curved and fancy. Yeah. Um, but something that's, or maybe it's curved, but it's just a rectangle that's curved. Yeah. Yeah, something Instead like of like a big, you, know, you don't need to see out down here necessarily. Yeah. Uh, you know, they, they have the thing that drops all the way down to your cheekbones. It's like, okay, maybe you get a tiny bit of peripheral vision down there, but for that much additional complication, that's not worth it. Um, I'd much rather have a $5 replaceable uh, safety glass material in there and be able to just, you know, oh, shoot, I got a bunch of paint on it or something. Oh, well, you know. Absolutely. Yeah, them out. <laughs> yeah, because yeah, that's what happens. You just get a, a splash of paint on it and you just got to throw the whole thing out. So here, yeah, that would definitely be useful. Yeah. For us, we do, we go through a lot of welding masks here. So actually, this can be integrated. So if you got the face shield, then you have the replace yeah. replaceable automatic darkening elements. So yeah. there's definitely a case including that with the, the light, light blocking for for masks, because like a welding mask is like a hundred bucks, fifty, a hundred bucks, but the element itself you can get it for like five dollars. Oh wow! A darkening element with yeah. the PV built in, it's like five bucks, and yeah, let's say that's basically turns the throwaway to lifetime design. So that's what we're after. Yeah. Yeah, that's cool. I didn't realize it was that cheap. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You look on uh, like eBay or Ali AliExpress; they're they're yeah. pretty cheap which yeah. is amazing yeah that's a that's a good enterprise in itself we should i mean i'd like to be making offering all these products as viable developed products the, the key is the product development just get all the details worked out right which is not easy and then then uh have that as an enterprise that once again just a local uh local enterprise yeah so i think that's that's Irvin on the call i think let's see what time we got here next one <laughs> at six uh, or six Okay. Yeah, so I should right. get going. But yeah, Chris, thank you for the info on this. this yeah, is you're good. welcome. We'll keep going and yeah, keep in touch on if you see like really good designs and we'll continue working on it. Yeah, sounds good. Okay. All right. Thanks a lot. Bye. Take care. Bye-bye.